Let's jump to the wall here, and today's video is going to be based around an exploit or massive cheese that has been brought to my attention fairly recently. And it's not a complete game breaker, but I th thought it was really interesting. And I've been looking to see if anybody else has covered it, and I haven't seen anything um, on the Reddit or anything about it yet. So I thought I'd just make a video on it, and if you want to use it, you can. If you don't want to use it, that's totally fine. But this is... Uh, this is definitely would uh, be a quality life improvement for a lot of people playing dwarfs because currently the dwarfs for a lot of people are actually really difficult. So, in this particular campaign, this is playing a Storgrim Grudge Bearer, it is on legendary difficulty. You don't have to be on legendary difficulty in order to do this, but playing as Karaza Karak as either Thorgrim Grudge Bearer or Grombrindle, you can do this as of turn one. I don't think you can do it on turn one with Karak Kadrin or Clan Angrind but you can do it fairly early on. This is a dwarf-wide exploit, and uh, we just got to... The only thing that we have to do first is get some initial Oath Gold. That's the first thing we need. So we need 30. So luckily with Karazza Karak, you get started off with a couple of grudges that you need to fulfill right away, which will get us 30 Oath Gold by the end of turn one, and then we can start doing the exploit. And the exploit is unlimited Oath Gold. Which I'm serious, it is actually unlimited Earth Gold. So the first thing we're going to do is fight this battle. Now you can auto resolve your way through this, but you shouldn't. So I'll just show how to win this battle pretty well, I guess. Using pretty standard dwarf tactics. Because yeah, if you auto resolve this battle and then the next one, you might end up losing a lot of your melee infantry, which is not good because you're going to have to deal with greenskins. Uh, pretty early on and Even the unlimited oath gold like it's good, but you can't bribe greenskins with oath gold So you still it's it's not like this is gonna make the game like super easy for you right away uh, Especially considering even if you've got like a billion oath gold um, You still need to get access to certain resources in order to get like the best items but when you do have unlimited oath gold you can basically get lots of shit items and just put them on your characters as placeholders when you get good ones. Because then, you know, you can always just recycle them as soon as, you know, you don't want them anymore. So it should be a pretty easy fight. Just let the grudge throwers do what they're going to do. Thorgrim Grudge Bear are going to go in there first. Try to get the enemy troops to crowd around him because he can tank really well try to get the hammerers in the rear because the enemy archers will target them because they don't have shields and since they're your best warriors and this isn't a difficult battle you may not really want to um, let them take too much damage whereas you know them shooting the dwarf warriors there is no big deal Man, they just want to keep the hammerers out of range of their archers. Actually, bring them back a little bit. Another reason that you might want to fight this battle manually is, is you don't actually want to wipe out this army. Whereas sometimes in order to resolve, you can, if you win, uh, you can wipe out the enemy army. Because it's possible to get three battles on turn one with Thorgrim. Which is really helpful because you need to get him lightning strike as soon as possible. Because a war will be called on pretty early on. And you're going to you're going to want to be able to lightning strike. That way you can just bypass any war forces that come in. And it will actually be detrimental to the greenskins to call a war if you've got lightning strike because it, I don't know why, but war forces are reduced in campaign movement range. So Thorgrim can tank like an absolute beast. 
probably will get the army loss penalty inflicted soon. Which now would be a good time because our forces are starting to take so much damage that they're not going to recover in one turn. Which is fine, as long as they don't get wiped out on this turn, it should be fine. And then just kill as many as possible just by shooting them, because you'll never outrun them. And this victory will get us our first load of 15 Oath Gold. Then we need to get another 15, and then we can start doing the exploit. And if you're, you've got an existing campaign, you're thinking, oh, damn it, I wish I knew this from right from the start. Well, you can do it at any point of the campaign. You just need to make sure you've got 30 Earth Gold. That's the only requirement you need. It doesn't really matter in this campaign, I guess. Take the money, take the extra leadership. Doesn't really matter. So there's our first load. Can't do it yet, because we need 30. Then capture and occupy Pillars of Grogni for another 15, and then we'll be able to do it. So, pop it down for Root Marcher. First thing you want to be doing with uh, Thorgrim is getting Lightning Strike. Any saving your disaster campaigns I get from uh, Karaza Krag or any Dwarf factions that have the possibility of having Lightning Strike but don't, I just roll my eyes so much thinking, you just screwed yourself because there's usually like four or five armies sitting in here within reinforcement range of each other and lightning strike is just you just you just need it on legendary difficulty anyway then what you want to do here is not actually directly attack the pillars of grogni you want to attack nashrak again or if you wounded him in the battle just what the remnants of his army the reason for this is so that you get three battles the next time this guy fights in a battle and loses, he's dead anyway. But that's not the case for these guys. So you want them to still exist. Doesn't matter about them. And that way you can fight the battle again. Now we could auto-resolve this, but once again, let's make sure we take minimal casualties. We didn't take that much damage in the previous battle. Actually, the Hammerers took the most. Uh, and that's funny enough, because they were actually fighting bloody Orc boys. Um, just goes to show you how much of a bonus they get in melee. But yeah, you could, you could probably auto-resolve this one without too much trouble. But we'll definitely order resolve the next one, but assuming this one goes well. So in this battle here, probably want to keep the hammerers completely out of combat and just use the other two melee infantry. And what you want to be doing in this battle here, because we've attacked them at a weird angle, um, you want to be primarily focusing on obliterating their reinforcements because they come in right in range of your troops. Because you can essentially inflict the army loss penalty on them. Uh, well, I'll be on both. So you don't you don't have to actually kill any of them, sort of. Oh, I should have moved a bit more of this way. Because they'll take forever to get here. Or what they'll even do is send some of them over there to meet up. So you're only dealing with just a couple of gobos or something. Probably don't really want to be shooting into uh, gobos just because of their really high missile block chance. At least not into the front of them, so move the quarrelers around the side here so you can do essentially 50% more damage. Well, actually it's double damage. Just bypassing their 50%. Goblins at the moment are currently seemingly better than orcs. Just let them go. Just gonna be, gotta be careful because grudge throwers can very easily shoot your own troops. They're not accurate until they start getting, you know, a lot of experience, then they get quite accurate. And again, just in case you don't know, to fire at the ground, just hold down ALT. That's all I'm doing is holding down ALT. And then just right click. 
Ideally, you just want them to leave the battlefield. So, miners can be replaced pretty easily, but... You know, it's just... Money can be a bit tight on a legendary campaign. No sense in getting them wiped out for nothing. Probably don't want Thorgrim taking too much more damage. Yeah, don't want them shooting at the hammerers. Even with uh, 100 armor, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. It does make a difference, but not that big of a difference because no arrow can do any less than one damage unless it's blocked by shields. So dwarf warriors might actually be better at handling... Um, actually, no, they're definitely better at handling um, archers than, than hammerers, even though they have less armor. So just trying to keep the damage relatively even amongst these three units. I'll try and snuff their lord. And there we go. It's also important to try to get three decisive victories. More experience for Thorgrim. You want to get to... Lightning strike as fast as possible. It's like absolutely essential for this campaign. Because even though you don't start off at war with Grimgore, he's basically going to declare war on you pretty damn soon. Since we got an item through that, what we could actually do is recycle it, but we're just going to get the Oath Gold from this anyway. It's always good to be able to intercept any green skins that are trying to get through over the end turn. You know, if you can. And yeah, we should be able to auto resolve this one, no problem. Alright, so then. How do we do this exploit? Okay. So. Your Dowie have been put to work fixing up the Yeah, okay, go away. So. Here's the thing. There are two items in the forge that cost 30 oath gold to make but recycle for more than 30 gold and those two items are the veteran's hammer which I'll make one of those and the ranger's cloak something went wrong in the I don't know when but if you have a look at how the uh, the Oath Gold has been structured, these two items here are in the sort of the rare category. And uh, for some reason, the Oath Gold, it just it doesn't make sense. It goes 90 with a resource and then suddenly 30, right? And then it goes up even more for the, for the blue ones. But uh, I think something in a database error just went wrong here. And anyway, what I just made for 30 Oath Gold, I can now recycle for 60. And then I could go back in. I have to close this because it doesn't actually recognize I've got any. I can go back in. I'll make myself a veteran's hammer. And then make myself a, uh, a ranger's cloak. Oh, but I don't like them. I want my money back. Then open it back up again. Now, I don't believe there's a talisman. Oh, hang on. No. I think the ranger's pouch might actually count. Let me see. So it might actually be three items. Let me just try. So that was 30. And then... Oh, there we go. Caught 60. Get it back. Okay, cool, cool. And in enchanted items... No, it doesn't look like there's an enchanted item there. 
So, it's just in the weapons, armor, and talisman. So, what you could end up doing, just... I mean, if you really want to, you know, be this kind of tedious with it. Now, it's not as big of a deal as this might seem, because... Having tons and tons of Oath Gold, while that might seem great in the early stage of the campaign, the real hard part then is just getting all of the uh, the different resources so you can make all the good items. Because a lot of these like early game items, they're not really that great. So there we go, we got 30 by, sorry, 300 by, by turn 1 already. So if you just, it hasn't taken us that long either. So if you spend like 5 or 10 minutes, you might end up with like a thousand Oath Gold. Which will set you up for the for the late campaign when you do actually get resources for the um, for the Iron Warden tankard, and then if you do have the resources for it, and you're like, oh, I don't have enough uh, Oath Gold, you know, to put it on all your characters, you can just do this. Then you don't have to do this on turn one; it's not a problem, and you can do it unlimited numbers of times. Now, I imagine that me making this video, and uh, if this gets posted on the Reddit. Like, I haven't told CA about this, because it's delicious. <laughs> and they will just, they will jump on something like this in the next patch. So, I'm quite happy for them to just check the Reddit and find it themselves. Because, <laughs> like, I'm not their QA stuff. I don't get paid to fix the game. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, by all means, fix the bugs. But I don't want to fix the exploits. Exploits are delicious. And there we go. So on turn 1, we've turned 30 Oath Gold into 600. Straight away. And then if we want to make some items for Thorgrim, it's, it'd be pretty easy to make anything of the of the basic shit. So we'd probably actually want to put the um, the Veteran's Hammer for the 6 melee defense really handy. And also the Ranger's Cloak, also super handy. And give him a, a Ranger's Pouch, you know, on turn 1. And then in the Enchanted items, you'd probably want to give him... Maybe physical resistance, speed's not super important, or the veteran's gauntlet. But then that's about it, because all the other ones will require resources. Um, which you could probably get fairly early if you can manage to get a, a trade agreement with like the Border Princes. But getting through here can be a massive pain in the ass. But the first thing you absolutely have to do is secure the Silver Road. And then, you know, basically wait for um, Grimgore to, you know, just send endless armies at you but it is what it is but anyway that's the unlimited oath gold exploits should be very easy for you to replicate there i shouldn't need to explain it again um use it don't use it entirely up to you uh, it'll just give you a lot of extra items to put a lot of really good items to put on your characters as soon as you get those resources especially the iron warden tanker that's the best one to get because like the talismans in general aren't that good where is it where is it um It's not this one. It's an enchantment item. Isn't it? Yeah, the Iron Warden's Tankard. Five melee defense. Liquid fortification. So that gives them essentially regeneration, which can also stack with Isabella's trait. So if you defeat Isabella and get the... Um, uh, I can't remember what the trait's called, but the, um, well, the... Yeah. The regeneration, it'll stack with it because technically two separate abilities. You can't apply the same ability twice, but you can apply different abilities that do the same thing twice. So there's also, like, just a really, really off-topic Gorbals. So... With Gorbals, you can actually stack their special buff abilities multiple times with different Gorbals if they're at different stages of their upgrade. So if you go for the one that provides like a plus 5 melee attack and just leave it at that and then get another Gorbal that gets it up to plus 9 melee attack, they're technically separate abilities and they'll stack. And so if you get, say, because that, that particular ability it stacks, there's four different tiers of it. If you get four Gorbals, right, and give them one level each. So you put one on level one, one on level two, one on level three, one on level four. That'll stack four times within that particular area. So you could end up getting like a plus 20 melee attack. I don't know what the actual math is without looking at it. Um, you know, on all of the units in that small area. Really good for, say, a blob attack or just, you know, the gore bulls themselves. You know, gore bulls with an additional plus 20 melee attack. That's pretty damn insane. 
so that as an example because people often ask about regeneration can you stack it you know if it's the same ability you can't stack it so for example if you if it was possible to put a liquid fortification with two separate items it won't stack but what you can actually do you can stack liquid fortification and you can also stack um uh the old guards tankard because they're two separate abilities as long as you're meeting the conditions for them you can you can essentially get regeneration Old Guard's tankard and Iron Water's tankard all at the same time and get 12 hit point regeneration per second. But I think that's a bit overkill. Anyway, that should be enough of an explanation on that. Hope that uh, makes your campaign more enjoyable. And if you don't want to use it, it's totally fine. It shouldn't affect you in any other way. And uh, I'll see you next time, fuckers.